guys, welcome back to Michael Clareda Arts. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna do something that I've done numerous times in the past. Um, and you guys know that I love getting stuff. <laughs> um, as per the uh, last few videos that I made uh, for you guys, just reviewing some stuff, some peripherals and tablets and whatnot. Um, a while back, I received an email from a company that had a very interesting name, uh, Frunsi, F-R-U-N-S-I. And this company uh, reached out to me because they saw some of the videos that I had done on YouTube using the um, wonderful application on the iPad called Procreate. And they said, hey, would you like to review this? This is a standalone uh, Bluetooth connected quick key programmable remote um, that actually I don't think it's programmable. I think it's pre, yeah, it's pre-programmed for Procreate. And what you would do is you would open the Procreate app. And those of you who have years and years of experience, or if you had no experience at all, it didn't really matter. You just pair it Bluetooth. And then all of these quick keys, these little quick keys that are pre-programmed on here would allow you to facilitate the numerous menus and things that um, are in Procreate, right? Uh, you know, the color, the layers, uh, the pen, the settings, selection tool, the color wheel, the, um, the color eyedropper. So basically what this device does is it's very similar to some of the other um, things that artists use whenever they're on the desktop. As you can see my desktop behind me in all of its wonderful glory. Um, you know, using the keyboard and the quick keys and, and all those things that your brain, you know, over years of, of using them uh, want, right? Procreate is very intuitive because it uses your fingers to pinch and zoom <coughs> and your fingers to tap and all that other stuff. So you had to learn a new way of doing things. And this little device here really facilitated kind of the bridge between those things. Um, I used it and I thought it was fine. It didn't, you know, blow my socks off particularly well because I had already developed an interface in my brain for using Procreate. So I didn't really see the need for this. Now, if somebody coming in cold, yeah, this is a great device for you. Go ahead and, and uh, you know, allocate one of these devices and you could probably, if you're used to using a keyboard, just use it. But I thought that Frunzi, um was a really cool company because they kept in touch you know, they would comment on my stuff on social media and, you know, and they reached out and they said, hey, we are interested in you reviewing one of our newest products, which is a standalone uh, Android tablet that you can draw on. And that's why they sent me this little guy right here, the Rubens Tab, I guess that stands for tablet, T11 Pro. This particular device um in its T11 configuration. Now this has T11 Pro next to it. So I'm looking on Amazon right now and the T11, uh, which they have for sale is about 219 bucks, about $230 uh, retail. And for that, it seems you get quite a bit. I received this in the mail today and it's very heavy. I was really surprised because I recently reviewed another company's tablet, it was very lightweight. <laughs> it's like, it didn't weigh anything. And I get this tablet in and it's heavy. And I'm like, why would a ta 10, 11 inch tablet, I believe this is 11 inch, 11 inch graphics tablet, um, that has pen support because it, it, it has, uh, you know, the, the pen interface that you can utilize and it runs Android. So I am interested in seeing what this particular tablet can do. As you know, the last tablet that I reviewed didn't have pin support. And even though um, I didn't get to draw on it per se, it still is an enjoyable experience for somebody that consumes media. Those of you who do, whether you play games, whether you watch YouTube, whether you shop, you're a media consumer. And I'm not much of a media consumer except whenever maybe I'm on YouTube um, you know, learning a tutorial or something like that. I don't, I don't spend too much time playing games and it's not my milieu. <laughs> um, it's not my bag, baby. So I basically, you know, I use these digital tablets to draw on and I'm excited to see what Frenzy has to offer. So what we're going to do today is to unbox the tablet, right? And see all of its goodness and all of its wonderfulness. 
And I'm looking at the box because they shrink wrapped it. And it doesn't really give me any information about the tablet at all. It just says the model, the Rubens Tab T11 Pro, US and Canada, and it shows the electronics uh, and the US, um, the US uh, address on the back. So, interesting. PRC, I don't know where that is. Made in PRC. I assume that would be uh, China, Asia, uh, somewhere over in that area. Um, so I'm super excited to see what this tablet has to offer. And the fact that I can draw on it. Ooh, that's novel on a drawing channel. Let's get started in the unboxing so you can stop looking at my face. Okay, so here we are in the unboxing. Take my trusty little pocket knife here and get through. Hold on, let me look here. Okay, get through the shrink wrap. You guys know that those of you who are visiting my channel for the umpteenth time, you know that I'm a product designer um, by profession. I do stuff like this, right? I design boxes, I design toys. Um, you know, I, I'm a 3D sculptor, I do graphic design, I do illustration. I kind of like color, uh, cover the gamut as far as, um, you know, products. I, I love good design. I love great unboxing. Um, you know, it is one of those things that is a little personal, so I don't like to share my unboxing uh, experiences too much. You know, I used to say that I hated unboxings because it was one of those things where I didn't want to focus too much on the box but I wanted to make sure and cover the product itself. So it's taped on both sides. The seal has not been broken. The box is rather thick and it does have good clear printing and it's a shiny, um, a shiny, shiny sheen, I guess. This is kind of, I don't want to say Bobo, but it shows the product and it looks good and it shows the brand name. Um, a little note for you guys in the art world, uh, three font types on the same page, kind of a no-no. <laughs> you typically want to keep things very cohesive, right? I mean, it's fine for all this, but whenever you have three font types, it, it kind of jumps at you. Anyway, nice picture, very clear. So we're going to go ahead and open it. Now, I'm not going to talk about the specs too much. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. Okay, so immediately all the seams look really good. The box is nice. What is that? Oh, that's a fingerprint. Ha! Interesting to note. Fingerprint from the manufacturing process. They should have used gloves. Wow, what is this? What is all this stuff? Oh my gosh, I don't think I've ever seen so many gloves. I've, I've had these gloves. This is actually one of the first of these iteration of these gloves. These gloves uh, are pretty cool because, you know, they don't allow smudges and the oils from your skin to get on the screen and also you know whenever you're drawing fast it helps with um, palm rejection and uh, this is probably one of my first ones made by smudge guard you know that thing was 30 bucks back in the day nowadays they include them with the tablets um this is pretty cool so we're gonna unbox this stuff right here i can't for the life of me why would you oh. Okay, so this is standard, you know, two-finger glove right there. Love. Got a little printing right there. Very nice. I'm sure there's one manufacturer for all these gloves. I've got like a billion of them now. Um, obviously, I'm overstating. But this is fascinating. What am I looking at? What is this? Little, little hands. I mean, I'm not a very large human being. Um, you know, I'm, I'm about five, seven and a half on a good day. And my hands aren't huge. They're, you know, average human size. But I have worked with my hands all my life. So I have a lot of a lot of strength in my hands. But, you know, because I've got a lot of development there. But these are small gloves. <laughs> and I'm not sure quite what these are for. And then, of course, we have the screen. This is the screen. It's got a little frenzy, right? It's the screen. It's making it look nice. And then we have this. This is fascinating. Okay, so this is the documentation i love documentation because there's one thing i do with it see ya i'm just kidding i don't do that after sales card it tells you if you have any issues please 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 don't go on social media and bash us that's not really what it's saying but that's kind of what it's saying just contact us directly and we will take care of you a lot of times these budget-minded tablets and i would consider this a budget-minded tablet because it is 
you know, under that $300 mark. And even though it might have a lot of things to offer, it doesn't have the name, right? The name attached to it. You don't have your Samsung, you don't have your Apple, you don't have your Microsoft. So those big names would, um, would allow them, uh, you know, to push things a little bit more in terms of, uh, you know, not saying thank you, right? You get something from Microsoft, does it say thank you? Typically not, it's like, enjoy, and if you have an issue, good luck. Um, okay, so, <laughs> I'm just kidding, Microsoft doesn't do that. Uh, yeah, so after sales card, and then we've got, of course, the booklet, which typically is in multiple languages, which it is, and it's got your normal, this is what it does, this is how it happens, this is charging the tablet, blah, 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 all that documentation. So we're gonna put that in front of us, because obviously if something goes awry, then I wanna have it handy. Okay, so here's a little tab. Another design choice, so we've got things wrapped in plastic bags, which I like, but these plastic bags um, aren't very good for the environment. Obviously, I don't really like them. You can do things in a way that doesn't, you know, doesn't, yeah, I'm gonna have to recycle all this stuff. So let's go ahead and get the, wow, there's just so many layers to this. So this is something, this is probably for the SD card slot. We'll look at that in just a minute. So let's go ahead and open this. If I don't slice my hand to kingdom come. Good. Okay, another plastic bag. So a bag inside of a bag. Multiple bags. Case in point, why so many bags? I know why they do this, because they want you to feel like you're getting things that haven't been touched by human hands. This has never been touched. Wait a minute, I see a fingerprint. I'm just kidding, I don't. So here's the power brick. Here's the cord, and it is USB-C, which again adheres to the EU's regulations on everything has to be unified. So there is the USB-C right there. And whatever this is, what is this? I bet I know what this is. It's a, oh, you're kidding me. Oh, it's a little dusty, a little duster. I don't know how to open it, because I'm an idiot. Oh, look at that, a little duster. Man, what, it's like they include all this really cool stuff. That's another thing, whenever you buy these tablets they want to maximize your value versus return so it's like you're thinking what am i what kind of tablet am i going to get for 300 bucks or 220 or 210 or 200 dollars so they include a lot of this other you know like this and the interesting gloves right it's like i'm not going to draw with the gloves but they include all these peripheral items to help you get a better and higher perception of value which so far high perception of value right and here's a battery I don't typically use batteries from um, from uh, these manufacturers just because a lot of the batteries, you know, in terms of vendors, they'll have like multiple vendors where they'll get batteries from. And I've actually had batteries from different vendors in China and Asia and some of those other areas that aren't up to the standards of like your Duracell, your um, Energizer and some of those batteries that here in the States we're used to. So even though I'm sure this battery is perfectly fine and everything that it is, I'm gonna go ahead and put it to the side for now, just to make sure that uh, you know I, I use the right battery and make the right decision. So again, wrapped in plastic. So this is probably a case. It smells like plastic. This is a branded case, and I don't have to buy a case for it. You know, you could argue, well, they give you a case so they don't want you to break your item. Well, that is smart, because <laughs> honestly, um, you know, whenever I buy, like I buy an iPad, I have to turn around and I have to spend another 50 to $75 on a freaking case. And that's not something I like. This case, this case is very similar to a case I utilize on my Surface Book 2. I still have my Surface Book 2 that I've had for probably about eight years, and it still works. This is almost exact, literally, this is the exact design. This is fascinating. I wonder if they did that. I wonder if Frenzy designed my case for my Surface Book. Very well done. It feels like a, um, it's not leather, but it feels very high-end. High-end, 
meaning that terminology that we uh, put to something that has a high perception of value, right? If this was made out of cardboard and it was cheap and crap, then I would say this is not very good. But this is nice, nice stitching. It's got uh, a debossing logo right there. It's got some ribbing right there so I can grab it. It's got a, uh, a very nice um, stand, right? So you stick it up like that, put the device in there, and shh, it's nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this to the side. So far, I've had like three layers of stuff here. Again, another bag, and I'm not putting down on the bags, it's just a lot of plastic, right? There's a lot of plastic in here. So we're gonna put that to the side as well. And finally, the star of the show. But before we get to the star of the show, I have to open the pen. Oh, pen's got weight to it. It's made of metal. I can tell you right now, it's made of metal. Mm, very nice. Oh my goodness gracious me. This is a nice pen. And you're like, well, how do you know it's a nice pen, Mike? Well, let me tell you something. One, two, three, four, and five. Plus I have a whole stack of pins to my right. So in terms of quality, you're comparing and contrasting to some of the other companies. This pen by Frontsy is so nice. It's, first of all, it's made of metal. It's got a nice clip to it. And then they've got nice nib. I've, I like the taper and it's got a textured barrel. So let's go ahead and put these other pins to the side because we're not going to need those. Right? So I surmise that this is unscrew. I was right. All aluminum. Oh, so nice. And it's got a very nice printed. Oh, and the battery's already in it. Alkaline. Fascinating. See, this is what I was talking about. See, here's the battery they include in the pin, right? Here's the battery that is the spare. Two different vendors. <laughs> All right, so I'm not complaining. It's a free pen, right? Okay, it's a, not a free pen, a, uh, a free battery. So let's go ahead and continue. And the pen, love it. Nice weight to it. Feels good. I don't see any extra nibs though. No extra nib. Where's the nibs? Where's the nibs? No extra nibs. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to live with it. Ooh, first of all, this, let's go ahead and get rid of this box here. Actually, let me turn it over. No, let's go ahead and do that. First of all, let's look at it. Let's look at it in all of its glory. Oh snap, it's so good. Okay, so what I'm looking at right now, I'm looking at fit and finish. I'm looking at the corners. I'm looking at where the front or the camera is located. It looks to have a screen protector on it, which I love. However, the screen protector does not get rid of the glare. It does have a high degree of glare and reflectiveness. Weight, it's not too heavy, but it is heavier than some of the other smaller tablets. This actually reminds me a lot. Man, that's beautiful. It reminds me a lot of Surf, or not Surface, um, Amazon. Amazon has like a gripped uh, backing. And then it looks like, I don't know what that is. What is that? I wonder if that's... I'm going to have to look. Oh, you know what that is? That's like for a docking station for a keyboard. So this looks to be like the um, five pin connector for a keyboard, if it had a keyboard with it. And it looks like you could probably order a keyboard uh, separately. And it clicks in and you can, you know, do the whole keyboard thing, which I don't really subscribe to that much. And then here's the IO. You have, looks like, uh, that's USB, USB, that's USB-C, power, and then we've got the little, little door right here, which this is for right here. So, for those of you who don't know, these little, this actually has a name. Um, for those of you who have had cell phones, before all you do is you poke it in a little hole right here boop, and it pops out the SD card slot very similar to a cell phone put that in there and it expands the the uh, the storage um, 
So what I'm going to do is, looks like we have speaker, speaker. So it's got stereo speakers. It's got a rear facing camera and a front facing camera. And then what I love about this is, oh, it's HDMI. Oh, wow. That's cool. See, I thought that was USB. I was wrong. I was wrong. HDMI, so micro HDMI out. You could go to a separate uh, display. Type C for power and data transfer. A microphone, a headphone jack, that's novel. And of course, the um, the micro SD card or TF card, which is what they like to call it. And here is, what is that? Is that a microphone? No. I don't know what that is, it says R. Maybe that's the power light. So there's the power, volume up, volume down. So let's go ahead and look at the back one more time. It's got a real nice printing. I was gonna say that's crooked, but it's not. This looks really good. This is called tampo printing. For those of you who don't know what tampo printing is, it's like a little sponge and it's they dip it in the ink and they stick it right there. And it, it can go on curved surfaces, it can go on flat surfaces. They use it a lot on toys for eyeballs and details, um, patterns and whatnot. So let's go ahead, we'll power it on really quick and see if it's got any power. Yay, powered by Android, very nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install it into the case. I'm going to install some applications on here then we're going to do what? Oh yeah, we're gonna start drawing, baby. We're gonna draw on this and we're gonna come at this as what I like to refer to as a layman, somebody that doesn't know anything about this tablet. Oh, it's got vision setting, okay, start. Connect to a Wi-Fi network. So let's go ahead and get everything set up here and we're gonna start having some fun. Okay, one of the things that I want to always make sure and show is the capability of the machine in action. So I decided to play just a few games. You know, here I am playing Angry Birds, and I switched over to a 3D app that helps with anatomy and reference, and it handled that, you know, perfectly fine. And then I saw that it had split-screen capability, so I went ahead and did some split-screen um, video showing exactly what it can do in that particular situation so you can see i'm kind of deciding on what app i want to use and and then you know i realized weatherbug actually uses the internet so it's a streaming app so again here we are split screen running two apps at the same time and uh you know both apps launched perfectly fine both didn't have any issues no hiccups at all i didn't have any screen uh outages or anything like that so very happy with the performance and then I'm like you know some games aren't just like Angry Birds they you know involve graphics and here I am playing a robot game that again is pretty complex and I'm like you know what do I do in the situation well I decide I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you know go over to Disney Plus because Disney Plus is really a very robust program that uses a lot of resources. It crashes on my Roku and uh, you can see here I am going to scrub through the video no problem. The machine um, you know has that capability to uh, you know have no problems on YouTube uh, or on Disney Plus. And then I'm like you know what let's tax it a little bit. Let's go ahead and do split screen Disney Plus and YouTube both streaming at the same time um, you know stealing some of those uh, CPU and RAM resources and believe it or not split screen it, it was perfectly fine didn't have any hiccups at all and I was really impressed with the performance of this little device definitely a media consumption uh, capable okay device. and here we are set up on my primary drawing desk so I've got the um, case installed over the tablet and what's really cool is it's got this little kickstand on the back and this kickstand has a magnet at the bottom of it which adheres to these little channels that are in the case so it gives you a really sturdy drawing platform 
that doesn't really go anywhere. And it's, I mean, whenever you have it set up correctly, it's just a fantastic little setup. So whenever I wanna, you know, take it on the run and go, all I do is I just fold it up and the case gets folded like this and I can go uh, on my way. So this is probably the way that I'll use it primarily, if not on my lap, whenever I'm sitting in, um, you know, maybe uh, in an airport or uh, sitting in the studio or, you know, out on the couch or something. And being a smaller tablet, 11-inch um, diagonally, um, it has a smaller form factor, which is really cool. And the, and the uh, you know, with the larger tablets like your iPad Pro, sometimes you get a little bit of flimsiness. And believe it or not, that is the exact reason, and I'm going to give you case in point, that is the exact reason why on my iPad Pro it's broken. Because... The larger and the thinner it is, the more um, possibility it is to bend. And unfortunately, my son sat on my iPad Pro and it ended up cracking. This, I don't believe is gonna have that issue because it is a little bit thicker. So we're concentrating on the actual usability of this particular tablet. Now, I've done some gaming on it. I've watched some Disney Plus. I've done some internet browsing, some split screening. Um, you know, I've done some, uh, just general media, uh, consumption on it, you know, and, and it did fine with the octa-core processor and the beautiful screen. Um, and it just, it didn't have any hiccups at all whenever it came to that. Um, I did decide that I wanted to go ahead and utilize, um, the pin that came with it. And I talked about this in the intro. The front seat pin is good. It's got a textured barrel and it's very comparable to the other pins that I have in my repertoire, as you saw when I was doing the intro package. And one of the pins that is compatible with it, believe it or not, is the um, the Renault CA Raphael 520, which if you've been on my channel before, you know this is one of the best pins on the market for Intrig slash Microsoft Pin Protocol devices. Um, and then you have, of course, the Microsoft uh, Pro Pin 2. This is the Pro Pin 2, which has the eraser on it. And those pins are compatible with this device. Um, but I wanted to stick with the Frenzy pin because that's the one that comes with it. And that's typically the one that people are going to really uh, gravitate towards because it comes with the tablet. I mean, whenever you get down to it, you're looking at the Raphael's like $45. The Pro Pin 2 can be upwards of $85 to $100. That's why, you know, sticking with what the manufacturer provides is probably the best bet. <clears throat> is it going to be the best experience? We'll see here in just a minute. So... I'm looking at this, and again, I go back to that that uh, moment whenever we first started it up, and I saw that it included Sketchbook Pro as one of the apps. You can download Clip Studio Paint. I did, and that is a paid program. Then you have something like Krita and Medibang, both of which are on the Android App Store, uh, Google Play Store, um, and uh, yeah. So, and, and there's probably other. Uh, painting programs or something called high paint which is a um a procreate knockoff literally verbatim and we might get into that here in just a minute but i wanted to stick again with what came with the product because that's something that you guys will probably look at and say um you know I want to stick with what came with the device. So I did a little bit of doodling here and I doodled one of my favorite characters in my repertoire. His name is Freddy. He's a Yeti. And uh, it did pretty good. Um, and I'm saying that because just like with any Microsoft pin protocol or, um, you know, Intrigue technology, there's going to be some hiccups. Hiccups being this. So I just, you know, did a really quick sketch. Now we're going to do a new sketch. We're going to do the, the, um, yeah, create. So we're going to do a really quick sketch. And, um, first I'm going to do a line test and line tests are something that we as reviewers do to give you an idea of exactly what you can expect whenever you get one of these devices. So first and foremost, Intrig technology has something called the Intrig wave. Okay. You can see it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You can see that there is consistent valleys. So you'll have different peaks and valleys. Okay. The intrigue wave, and it's more prevalent whenever you're drawing diagonally. And it, 
It doesn't happen if I were to draw fast. Let's say, say if I were to draw fast. So you can see there's no wave at all. It's because the intrig and the, um, the algorithm that it uses to kind of predictive text, predictive stroke, not text, predictive stroke. And that's really good whenever you're doing handwriting, okay? So like um, on some other devices using OneNote, which again is a Microsoft pro program, the, the note taking feature is really good. Um, but whenever you get into the drawing and you start having this right here, that wave, that intrig wave, then it's kind of off-putting. So let's go ahead and do a vertical. And you can see there is that distance between the end of the cursor, or I'm sorry, the end of the pen and the cursor. It's minuscule, so if I were to go faster and it gets more prevalent. So that is basically lag. Do I think it's processor lag? I don't really think so. I think it has to do with how the digitizer on the screen is reading the pen feedback and, and it's processing, processing it through the program and going and, and showing you on the screen. So if I were to do horizontal, again, we're not getting that, that intrig wobble and the, the, the line is really nice. And the pen pressure is really good too. So we're gonna go ahead and see a little bit of wobble here. Now, here's one of the things that I wanna note, and this has to do, again, with Intrig technology. You're, depending on the pen, depending on a couple of factors here, mostly the pen. The pen and the digitizer and the coverage, sometimes you'll get breaks. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go really light here. Let's see if I can get it to do it. Okay, so like that, that little inconsistency right there. Okay, see, that's what I'm talking about. That right there. So I went ahead and I did a consistent line and I'm getting breaks. These little breaks right here are the Achilles heel of this particular pin. Unfortunately, this pin, I'm not gonna say it has issues, but there's definitely challenges whenever it comes to consistency of line. And, and consistency of line is something that we really, as artists and digital artists, really pay attention to. So just to give you context, because I'm one for context, just to show you that sometimes all pins are not made the same. So we're gonna go with the Microsoft pin. This is a branded Microsoft pin. It's got the standard nib on the end, and I know this one works because I've, I've got it with my other Microsoft devices. So we're gonna go ahead and you see the consistency is better. I'm gonna go ahead really light. You see, I'm not getting a lot of that issue. And see, again, you see how I'm not getting any breaks? So obviously, Frenzy still has some work to do on their branded pen. Now, here's the deal, this is what I think. Since this is Tampo printed, meaning a little sponge goes in and it prints onto their, um, you know, their little logo onto this pen. This is probably a sourced item. This is probably also a sourced item, but they've put their branding on it. And then the, these pens are sourced. So these pens are very inexpensive whenever you, um, you know, buy them in bulk. Uh, but whenever you actually engineer a pen, something like this, a little bit more uh, solid engineering goes into the Microsoft unit. And so, it just works a lot better. I'm, I'm getting some shoestringing, but watch. So now I'm gonna switch to the Frenzy pin. See, I'm getting breaks. See, there's breaks happening. Quite a bit, here and here. And then I'm gonna switch back over to the Microsoft Pin Pro 2. So you can see it is not the tablet. The tablet is not at fault. And that's one of the things that we as, you know, as reviewers really have to consider whenever we do a product like this, because obviously we want it to work right, but we also need to understand that sometimes some of the peripheral items like the pen might not work as well. Here's the Renassier Raphael 520. Again, we're not getting any of those breaks. Okay. I do have a wobble and I do have some lag. Again, that's a digitizer. Now we're gonna go to the front seat pin, the one that came with the unit. Let's 
say we're getting some breaks. So, little case in point, I, I, I really hesitate to start drawing with the frenzy pen because I know that I'm gonna be frustrated. If I switch over to this pen, it's gonna have a better drawing experience, but the reality is you don't have this pen. You're gonna have the frenzy pen. So we're gonna stick with the frenzy pen for this particular drawing, and that's in Sketchbook Pro, okay? So we're gonna stick with Sketchbook Pro just because I know, we're gonna add a layer, I know that that's the one that comes with the, pro, with the machine and that's the one you're gonna stick with. So I actually downloaded Clip Studio Paint, whoops, Clip Studio Paint, and believe it or not, Clip Studio Paint, of course it is a paid program if you don't already have a subscription, um, Clip Studio Paint runs very, very well on this machine. So we're still sticking with the front seat pen. We're gonna go ahead and look. I've got nice, I'm not getting hardly any breaks. I'm not getting any breaks. And you see how it does have some interesting little variables, like a little wild palm rejection, false positive. But I'm getting very nice line weight. I'm getting very nice coverage. Very light pressure, very hard pressure, very light pressure, very hard pressure. Occasionally I'll get a blob, but that, uh, again, I'm just saying possibly could be the front seat pin. So, you guys aren't going to have access to the Clip Studio Paint right off the bat, so we're going to go ahead and it does run really well, just so you know. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick a pin. This one's pretty good. Pencil, and we're gonna go ahead and start drawing. Now, I wanna just kinda of preface this as being something that I do a lot, right? I do a lot of drawing, I do a lot of reviews, um, and I know pretty much what feels good in terms of a drawing. I know what works, and this particular device has a handful of positives, right? It's fast, it's got great battery life, the drawing experience is pretty good, about eight out of 10, and then it has portability, and then it has a lot of accessories included. So, and the price point's really good at, what, $200? The, the challenge that I see, and this is obviously my own you know, take on things, is the fact that I have had access to really high-end drawing tablets, I mean like your 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 uh, your Wacom, you know, your Cintiq, your uh, iPad Pros, your your you know really high-end laptops that have a very high quotient of drawing um, experience. And I, I'm comparing this particular vice to those and that's probably not fair because this is a budget minded you know pr priced uh, device that even though it can do a lot, really at $200, it's very hard to find a really fantastic drawing device, all inclusive, right? I'm not talking about, you know, uh, a, a, a tablet, a display tablet. I'm talking about an inclusive device that is running an operating system that, you know, basically you can take anywhere and draw on it. And it's hard to do that and to have a good drawing experience. Now, I did see stuff on their website. Um, actually, not on the website, I saw it on Amazon. Amazon, it, this particular tablet, the Pro model, might be one that's coming out soon because I didn't see it on Amazon. I saw the Tab, the Rubens Tab 11, uh, T11, then I saw the T11 II, and this is the T11 Pro. So, I'm just, I'm looking at this going, okay, the T11 Pro. Where is the T11 Pro? Um, I didn't, I didn't end up finding it. So this might be something that's coming out that's new. I, I really don't know um, because the T2 indicated 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity. That currently is the standard. I know we've had, uh, we've had a couple companies that have dipped into the 16,000 mark. Uh, most recently, XP Pen being one of those companies, 
and hopefully uh, we'll start seeing some change in the market. But 8,192 is still the industry standard. So if they have that, I would love to get my hands on that. I don't think this is 8,192 levels. I think this is probably, since it's using the Intrig, probably around 2,400, somewhere around there. And um, it's still, like I said, it's still good. It still has decent pressure. And I love using Sketchbook Pro. If, if you've followed me on this channel, you know that Sketchbook Pro is one of my go-to programs, and it has been for a long time, especially on Microsoft devices or devices using uh, the Intrig technology. It just works better um, in Sketchbook Pro. Overall, I'm not getting any false positives. The palm rejection is really good, and I can set that up in this included um, program. See, show tool tips, general, three finger, three finger, that's not even a word, three finger um, preference settings, pinch, two handed, rotate, color picker, two handed full screen. I don't know where I found that. Anyway, so I digress. I'm, I'm sitting here talking and not drawing. My, my apologies. It is a good example of something that was, you know, maybe five years ago, right? I'm basically, I remember reviewing and doing tablets um, years and years ago that were similar to this one. You know, even like the, the Surface Pro 3. That one, you know, I did quite a bit of our artwork on that one, and it had the Intrig technology. So I just think that, uh, man, where are they? Where is Frenzy going to be with this device in even a year? In a year, this device has a potential to be spectacular. It's not quite there yet, but man, they're close. They are so close. You can see that I'm I'm drawing. I'm having a good time. Uh, I'm going to do that. I'll go back. I'm having a good time. And basically, it's going to be a raccoon. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. I think that overall, I, like I said, about an 8 out of a 10. There is quite a bit of disconnect. Like I said, I feel, I feel like the pin, I'm fighting against it. There's a lot of battling going on. Because it's like, I, I want the pressure to be right, but then it's not, it's too heavy. And then I get little squigglies, like this little line right here that just kind of went out of control. So, either way, I think that, uh, you know, just for posterity, what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to put you guys on a time lapse to let you watch my fun in, in using um, Sketchbook Pro on the Frenzy Rubens Tab T11 Pro. And hopefully, on the other side, after I do my little time lapse shtick, you guys will see a cool piece of artwork. I hope. I hope it turns out good. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and. do the artwork here and I'll do a final wrap up at the end and I'll just explain you know the pros and cons of this particular device um, you know let's go ahead and have that come over the pros and cons of this device and ultimately at the end of the day if it's really worth the $219 and can you do artwork on it? Obviously, since you guys are watching me do the artwork on it, the answer to the question of whether or not you can do artwork on it is yes. As a professional, I just... Professional machines are hard to come by, right? Ones that kind of click all the boxes. You know, it says it's for students. Which I think, yes, it, it's for students, it's for media consumers, it's for, you know, people that, that want a device for their children. And, and I think that overall, it definitely clicks a lot of those boxes. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to, let's get that light source over here. We're going to have a little fun drawing today. 
and uh, enjoy the time lapse, okay? <laughs> Here's where I'm going to land with this particular piece. So this was basically an exercise for me to kind of understand the um, the features and uh, limitations of this particular setup. So as far as speed goes, I think that the machine is capable of running some pretty powerful programs. Clip Studio Paint being one of the most premier professional applications out there. I use it daily in my professional work and sketchbook pro it can run sketchbook pro really well and the sketching feature and the drawing feature like i said is probably about 7.5 or 8 out of 10 10 being something like your your you know your wacom tablets display tablets with you know 8000 levels of pressure sensitivity um uh overall i think it's you know a good package and frontsy is definitely working towards something that is going to be really good probably in the very near future okay so doing a wrap up this was a very interesting review for me because like i had said before i have i have had the opportunity to dip my proverbial pencil into a myriad of different um, tablets different form factors portability different power levels and I'm always one to say, hey, if it does what it advertises, then it's going to be a positive review. That's just the reality. You know, this one did a lot of, you know, the, the, the Frunzi Rubens Tab um, T11 Pro did a good job probably 75 to 80 percent of the time. And at that $220 price point, as uh, an all-in-one traveling companion, you know, content-consuming computer, 
that has frankly some spectacular battery life. I think I've only charged this thing once in the entire week that I've used it and I've put it through some pretty technical paces from drawing to um, you know watching videos to playing some games. So it's a pretty pretty decent uh, tablet uh, overall in terms of what it's advertising as a quote-unquote creative drawing device. Um, I guess that really depends on your level of preference and your understanding of what good is versus mediocre, right? You know, uh, in the beginning when they started introducing drawing tablets, they didn't have the whole pen technology down at an affordable price point, right? Wacom was charging I keep referencing Wacom because they're kind of the innovator in the industry. They've been around since the 90s. You know, putting a, a Wacom pressured stylus onto a portable all-in-one, not all-in-one, I keep saying all all-in-one, a portable computer, it was very, very expensive. You know, I can remember back in the day when some of these machines would cost upwards of $3,000, something called a mod book that uh, introduced uh, Wacom technology to a Macintosh. You know, and years later, whenever Surface came out, I remember getting the Surface Pro 2, and it had Wacom technology. And I used it, and I thought it was fantastic, but it had some hit or misses here and there. And then we get into the Intreg era with Microsoft, and then they start licensing their Microsoft PIN protocol to different devices. And it starts showing up uh, in different devices at different levels, because every year they keep improving that particular technology. The... Um, the Frenzy tablet, I think, like I said, is about a 7.5 or 8 out of 10. 10. 10 being really good, you know, 5 being average, it doesn't quite do what it's advertised. Um, you know, 3 being pretty bad, and, and I've never reviewed anything below like a 5. So the technology, everything's kind of leveling out, and I think that as, as long as Frenzy keeps making tablets at this particular uh, level of of design, right? So the fit and finish is really good. The um, the batteries battery life's really good. It, it's running Android 12. Um, it runs Clip Studio Paint. I mean, gosh, how picky can I really be? Um, whenever it comes to that, you know, we're as artists, we're always looking for that one device that kind of covers all the areas. You know, it want to be it wants to be fast, great battery life, play games on it do your email, watch your videos, pay your bills, you know, and and of course, as an artist, you want it to draw well. And this one does have its hang-ups, and I've seen really good, and I've seen just mediocre. This is right between good, right? Good about 9 out of 10, and being kind of not so great and hard to work with. Um, which is about a 6 out of 10. So right in that 7.5, you can make it work. And you saw me draw in um, in Sketchbook Pro, uh, a program. That, and it's plus it comes loaded with a bunch of uh, applications and preloaded with Google um, applications that track all of your data. <laughs> um, I digress. I'm just being funny. So what what is the final word? Is it worth $220? Yes. It is so much worth that. Now, would I, as maybe a student that doesn't want to spend, say, four or $500 on an iPad that doesn't run full applications? See, that's, that's the caveat. This runs full Clip Studio Paint. Um, I, I don't think it'll run Photoshop. I didn't try, but it does run Krita. Okay. It does run um, Medibang. Okay. Right, it's not great. It's kind of it's kind of laggy, and the pressure curve's kind of weird. And and again, that's not the tablet's fault. You know, this pen, and you saw that this particular pen, unfortunately, um, has some design flaws in the technology. And I know it's the pen because I've got like six other different pens that support Intrig, and they work good. Now, did I get a bad pen? There's a possibility I got a bad pen, right? That's a possibility. But what's really cool is even if I did get a bad pen, I can contact Frontsy and I'm sure that they'd make it right. Um, but uh, anyway, so gosh, overall great device. Comes with a lot of extras. I mean, comes with a case, comes with a pen, comes with a drawing glove, comes with 
extra drawing gloves, comes with charger, comes with these little things that they include a, a, a wiping, you know, a wiping to wipe the screen. It comes with uh, a screen protector on here already installed. So um, yeah, I think it's worth 220 bucks, $240, even $250 because it's it's got such a good baseline in terms of, uh, you know, what it can do. It's got a camera, the pictures are okay, it takes okay pictures. It takes, you know, it, it, it does okay video chat. I used Zoom on it. Quality's okay, it's not spectacular. But, you know, what do you, what do you really, what is your expectation at that 220 to $240 price point? Could you save your money and buy something higher end? Yeah, absolutely. But if you're wanting to get into the market, um, of an Android powered, I think this is probably one of the least expensive Android powered drawing tablets, and that's the caveat, the drawing tablet on Amazon, and it is completely worth 220 bucks. Um, so that's pretty much it. All that I had for you guys today, hopefully you liked the review. I, I take a little bit longer, and I'm sorry, I, I take a little bit longer to do the reviews because you watch a review a lot of times and you gotta watch like five and six of them because it doesn't cover all of the areas that you really want it to cover. Now, one of the areas that I didn't cover, unfortunately, because I, I kind of ran out of time, you can hook this up to a drawing tablet. <laughs> it's like I have a drawing tablet. I can actually hook this up to like say an XP pen or a Huion or one of those and um, it, uh, it seemingly should go pretty smoothly. And it's got an SD card slot that I can install 128 gigabyte uh, you know, SSD drive as expandable storage. Um, so I might do that in another video, uh, you know, hooking a tablet up the front seat. I've got a lot of tablets, so I can hook, I've even got, you know, if you look behind me, I've got a 22 HD tablet that I can hook up to it just for fun to see if I can make it explode. I'm just kidding, I wouldn't do that. Um, but definitely there's more videos coming and hopefully you're getting something from these uh, reviews. Um, that's about it. Definitely like and subscribe if you like what you see. And please, as always, go out and do something that benefits either your bottom line of drawing skill. Maybe you go out and observe and sketch or you go out and spend time with family and friends and just make the world a better place. All right. We'll see you next time. Okay, guys.